Hello, this is Randolph Wolf with Enjoy the Central Coast, and today we're at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca for the American Le Mans series, actually the 14th year of this series, and the only consistent factor has been that every year there's been a race, an American Le Mans race, here at Mazda Raceway. And what a gorgeous weekend we're having here on the Central Coast. This raceway has been compared to the Sistine Chapel of raceways in North America. And there's no question about it. All the major races and race drivers want to come here. It's the location and it's the track and it's just all the major players are here. So, and I have my Right, talking about major players, is Player French. <laughs> well, that's very nice. Thank you, Randy. It's very exciting to be here. Just hearing the cars and the engines, I understand we, we are going to be meeting with some of the drivers later and speaking to some of the pit crews and, and learning more. It's going to be really exciting. You can feel the energy. Well, it's building, and the race, the actual race is tomorrow. This is the warm up, so to speak. And we did get that nice break in the action. Soon we won't be able to hear ourselves think. But uh, if you get an opportunity, come to the raceway if you've never been. It's gorgeous and you can get out of that Carmel fog. So enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to Enjoy the Central Coast. I'm Blair French and today we're at the Mazda Raceway out at Laguna Seca and I'm standing here with Melvin Record. That's correct. Is that correct? Yes. And Melvin, can you tell us what you, what you do here? Uh, I work in the sales and marketing department and uh, I'm responsible for trying to persuade people to buy tickets to this wonderful racing facility. Fabulous. And what is the, give us a little bit of the history about this race. Sure. Uh, this race in particular has been at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca for 15 years. It's an international sports car racing event. and. When the track was established in 1957, part of its mission statement was to bring international racing events to the Monterey Peninsula. So this event fits very nicely with that mandate. And so when you say international, you have people, drivers and cars represented from all over? Yeah, absolutely, yes. And this series in particular, which is the American Le Mans series, they have drivers from all over Europe and South America, of course, including drivers from North America as well. Any idea how many countries are represented? I think we counted it a couple of years ago and there's about 30 countries represented. It's an awfully large number of foreign drivers. So for the American Le Mans, what kind of cars are we going to be seeing out on the racetrack today? So, it, so it's generally a mix of two types of cars. There's prototype cars, which is similar to the vehicle that we have behind us, which is a very exotic, very advanced, high technology racing car. And then the other kinds of cars are what we call GT cars, which stands for Grand Touring. And that would be BMWs and Porsches and Audis cars that you would sometimes see on the street but obviously very heavily modified to be in a racing environment. Sure. Now do you have some other events coming up for the season? Absolutely we do. We have five major events every year and the biggest race that we have is actually a motorcycle race and it's a round of the MotoGP World Championship. That's another international event and we have riders from all over the world come to that particular race. And then we have a vintage car race in August, which is the Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion, which is a lovely event for featuring racing cars from the last, uh, last 10 decades, not 100 decades, the last 10 decades. Uh, so it's, a, it's really a rolling museum. And uh, then in September, we have another motorcycle race and another sports car race. Excellent. It's good to know there are things on the horizon. So hopefully we can come back. I, I would be thrilled if you would come back. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, this is Randolph Wolf, and I have the pleasure of being beside the CEO and general manager of the Mazda Laguna Seca Raceway. And uh, this is the iconic raceway in all of North America, as Jill Campbell would attest to. Is that correct? Absolutely, it is. It's one of the top 10 traditional road courses in the world, so we're here. Absolutely. This is the uh, 14th annual or the 14th consecutive. Uh, I believe race with the American Le Mans series and the only consistent factor has been that this raceway has been featured in every one of those years, correct? Absolutely. We're the sports car racing is, um, of Monterey Peninsula so you know sports car racing is in our DNA. American Le Mans has been here for it's, it's 15 years now and prior to that IMSA was here since its inception so we're it for sports car racing. Well I have to uh, to mention to our viewers, which is pretty obvious that this lovely woman, uh, this is quite a unique position to be 
in charge of a major raceway, is that true? Yes, it is. There are actually only, uh, well, there are now three women in the country that are involved in um, running a racetrack. One is in Virginia, uh, one is in Southern California, and I'm here. So how did you attain this lofty position? I understand from a, from a source of mine that you were at one time the... Um, the duck, the Oregon duck. <laughs> yes, by default, actually, I don't think anybody knew it was me, but I, I stood in for the duck who was sick. So um, I, I did have that privilege for quite a while. Yeah, I came out of, actually, I was a school teacher, went into restaurant management, got me into public relations and special events. I got me into motorsports, and here I am. That's an amazing story. And I understand you did a bit part in Animal House. Yes, I did. I think my nose is in the toga party scene. <laughs> that is great trivia, and uh, so you'll be uh, quizzed later. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Jill, it's a great pleasure. Uh, this this uh, track is a great treasure on the Central Coast, and uh, we are indeed lucky to have the track here, and it's a great draw. Imagine all the hotels and uh, restaurants are indeed grateful. So. On behalf of them, thank you. Well, thank you for being here. And again, you picked the perfect day, or did you bring the weather? One of the <laughs> two, but it is a perfect day in paradise. It's never foggy here. <laughs> okay, thank you. We're here with Catherine Legg. Catherine, can you tell us a little bit about the car that you're driving today? I understand there's a little something different about it. Oh, have you seen it yet? <laughs> Not yet, but I'm excited to see it. Okay, well, when they finish doing the development stuff on it, then they put it back together, then you'll see it. It's, uh, it's called the Delta Wing car, and it is very unusual. You can't miss it because it's all chrome, but it's basically got a really, really skinny nose, and it's really wide in the rear. <laughs> I don't know uh, how, to, how to put that, but it's a very efficient car. It doesn't have wings on it. It gets all the downforce from the underneath of the car. Um, it's it's very fast in a straight line, but it just looks unusual because it looks like a big arrow. So when you're driving it, what kind of modifications do you feel like you have to make as a driver? How does it compare to driving other cars that you've driven? So every race car handles differently, uh, whether it's a GT car or a prototype car or an Indy car. Um, this is just another nuance of that really. Once you're in the car, it doesn't drive that differently. Um, but to look at it from the outside, before I got in, I was thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to drive this? I was calling the other driver. And then when I got in, I'm thinking, it's just a race car. It's a really, really good race car. So um, I think it, it looks more mind-bending than it actually is. How long have you been doing this? A long time. <laughs> I don't want to give away my age. That's OK, but <laughs> how did you get into it? So I've been racing since I was nine years old. Uh, obviously English, you can probably tell by the accent. Um, I grew up racing go-karts and going into Europe and then I worked my way through the ranks and I came over here in 2005 and I love it here so I decided to stay. <laughs> Beautiful. Well now, how long have you been driving? Was today the first day that you tried this, the Delta? No, the Delta, we've been developing the Delta Wing so we've done a few test days on the run up to this race and we will continue to. It's still very much in the development stages. So. Um, we're learning about it, we're making it quicker and we're making it more reliable and uh, it's obviously one of the biggest things about this car is the efficiency that it provides because everybody's going greener, right? And it's, sure. all, it's all about efficiency. So we use less fuel because we don't need so much power because we don't have so much drag. So um, it uses less tires and, and all those kind of things. So I think it's a great step forward for the future. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know you're on a schedule here and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, I'm here with Jason. Jason is a car chief, is that correct? That's correct. All right, now, Jason, would you just explain to us some of the very basic differences, ob besides the obvious differences in this <laughs> car, this is not like my car. Um, what are some of the differences in these Le Mans cars? Um, the main difference is this car is manufactured strictly for racing. Um, it's made from a blank piece of paper and a bunch of engineers that say, you know, basically want to go fast. Okay. And I, I know that the steering wheel is something that you're going to explain to us that you have. Can you, can you show us the steering wheel and the differences? Yes. Um, I mean, one thing is the steering wheel majorly. Uh, you, we're going over the technology and what we have in this. I mean, for instance, this is not your ordinary wow. steering wheel. Um, we have plenty of buttons to keep the drivers busy and the engineers for the, the entire race. 
What can they con can they control everything from this? Yes, um, almost everything. A lot of it is um, different maps, so we can control how much fuel we consume. Okay. Um, you know, that's a big miles per gallon thing on the on the street. You know, we can control it just by rotating a knob, and then that will consume a lot less fuel and you know have less power. But sometimes it's okay for a longer race, like here at Mazda Raceway. Wow, that's fascinating. Now let's walk around the car just a bit, and you okay. can give us a tour, so to speak. All right. Um, well, here is part of the aerodynamic system. This is the rear wing and the rear diffuser. What this does is controls the air so it pushes the car downwards, creating downforce. Um, we have seriously wide tires. Um, yes, you do. To gain more grip. These are actually our rain tires. You can see they have notches in them. And we have also slicks for the dry weather, which is actually over there. Um, what else do we have? Were you expecting rain today? No, this is just our roller around. Okay. So when we're pushing the car around the paddock, we don't want to get a nail in the tire or rocks. So, um, and back here is a lot of the suspension. Again, not your typical streetcar stuff. This is a cantilever suspension, where the shock is on a streetcar is actually a push rod, and then it goes to a rocker, and the, the dampers are up high and inside to keep the weight central in the car, so we can control it. Okay, is that like your center of mass. Not, exactly. Okay. Got exactly. Um, what else? We actually have AC in this car. One thing similar to streetcars. There's this common ground. Yep. Um, it actually is part streetcar stuff in it, but it's it's a little bit different. It's driven by a right rear axle, so we have to be going. I'm sure this car goes a lot faster than my car. What what kind of speeds can we reach? Um, here on the front stretch, we reach 153. So right in front here is 153 miles an hour. That's significantly it, more than I've, yes. It's, it's pretty quick. I mean, it's, it's from, you know, a corner. It's probably a few thousand feet, and we're up to that speed. Okay. Is there anything around the back that you want to sh show us? Uh-oh. <laughs> one of our tuners at, hard at work there on the engine. Um, again, we have, here's the, our front aerodynamic setup. You can see all the, uh, the dive planes, these are called. And are these we, similar to the back? The, Similar. to keep the car down on the... Exactly, it's all for downforce. And we, uh, we can control how much downforce we want. Um, we, you know, some tracks where it's very high speed, we'll take a lot of it off so the car can go faster. Now, is there a whole team that works on this car and how, how many are, are on, on a team? I believe that on this team, there's 25 for one car. 25 people? Yes. For what? That's service. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody has their job. We have a fuel guy. We have a guy, you know, constantly on a fire bottle. We have three engine guys. We have Rob Dyson, who's the Dyson Racing owner. Um, then we have two engineers. We have guys that do strictly just all the electronics on the car. And then we, uh, we have guys that analyze data also. So every sensor, every button that is on the car and the billions of wires you see is all data logged and then we have to interpret it and we can see what the car does on track. So this takes a village yes. to just run <laughs> these cars. Wonderful. Well, thank you for, for the tour. No we, problem. We really appreciate it. No problem. We're here with another Jason. Jason, what is your last name? Jason Sani. How are you involved with this operation? Uh, I started this team uh, with uh, CJ Wilson, who pitches for the Los Angeles Angels in a, a couple of years ago. And, okay. Uh, so we've, we've been building up in these, these lower series and trying to work our way up to the, the big leagues here. And you've agreed to let me sit in that car. Absolutely. It's uh, Mazda Raceway. You might as well hop in a Mazda, right? Of course. Okay, now you're going to give me some special instructions, yes? Yeah, you Because this is not like my car. No, no, it's not. It's, you have to actually go feet first, so you're, I'm, I'm not sure you're going to be able to hold the oh, microphone. No, you're so. going to hold the mic, Jason. Okay. Congratulations. This is your new job. Excellent. So it doesn't pay as well as the current job. You're going to have to go feet first. Feet first. So both feet on the seat? Both feet on the floor. So, so basically you'll hop up in. Both feet. you got to start with your right one, though. Start with my right <laughs> one. There you go. Now the other foot. So you're going to have to brace yourself with your hands, other foot, there you go. And then you lower yourself down. A little easier with a racing suit on, but yeah, just sit down. I did it! You did it! And then, and then you can grab the, steer, grab the steering wheel, that'll help you if you want to drive away. So yeah, the next step, you gotta, you got to put the steering wheel on if you want to go anywhere. I do need the steering wheel. Yeah. Why isn't it attached? 
Uh, well, this is uh, this is just to help get in and out of the car. So you, you, we take it off just to, to make it a little bit easier to, to get in and out. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to hold this. Now it does go on, right? Yeah. So you hold that and you grab the yellow ring at the back and you pull that towards you as you as you go on to the steering column. There you go. Well, that's on. Ready nice and snug. Okay. So uh, it's pretty fit. I'm, I'm fit perfectly for this. Yeah, this actually, Emily normally drives this car. You're about the same size, so. Are you hiring? Uh, yeah, actually, well, I, Emily will be really disappointed in me, though, so I think we better test you out first well, on the track. Don't you think Emily could teach me a few things? Ab it could be a mentoring type of program. I oh, absolutely, yeah. She's, uh, she actually just started racing three years ago, so she, uh, she knows how to get started in this. She could give you some pointers. Well, I learned on a stick, and um, so, I, you know, I, I could do this. You're set to go. I feel very safe in here. It is very safe. All of the safety equipment that these cars have are, are designed to, to keep us uh, keep us out of harm's way. How many seat belts are in this car? Uh, it's got well, it's got a six-point harness. So you've got lap belt, shoulder belts, and then one that goes up through the center, anti-sub belt. So you should have told me that before I asked you for the job. Now I feel less safe. <laughs> you know what they say about a car with a lot of seat belts? Yeah, it's it's. I don't know. I just made that up. <laughs> we we have to come up with a saying for that. <laughs> They're more likely to run into something. Is that what it is? I don't know. A lot of headaches. I don't know. Okay. Well, thank you, Jason. This is, now, are you going to help me get out of here? Uh, you're on your own on the way out. Oh, can I just, is there an eject button? You can go straight out the top. But then getting out of... Okay, I'm going to figure it out. This will be comical. Oh, really? How do I get out? Same way. Uh, reverse of, of uh, on the way in. So get your... Get, you, you don't have to. You can come out this way. And basically sit on the roll bar. So get your, haul yourself up to where you're sitting on it. See, we forgot to take the wheel out. That made it harder. Years of yoga. This helps. Definitely. Then both legs out and you're out. Oh, I'm tired. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. It's up to me, I'm hired. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And Thanks. you're hired too. You did really well with that microphone. Thank you. <laughs>